Good evening, everyone. I call the meeting of the Newtown Township Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, today is November 9th, 2022, and welcome everyone here. Uh, as is customary, we have a moment of silence. Uh, I would just um, ask for a moment of uh, that you have take a moment for the family of Susan Turner, who was um, the board the the council chair of Newtown Borough. She passed away unexpectedly um, recently, and just to keep her family. In, in your thoughts and prayers, uh, I had the pleasure of working with her as well as Ms. Snyder uh, when we d negotiated the fire services agreement with uh, the borough and the township. So uh, let's take a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Would you join the board uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Mr. Lewis, are there any changes to the agenda this evening? Mr. Chairman, there's one recently recent addition. Item 11C3 under the manager's report was added yesterday. Okay, we will get to that directly. Um, no special actions. That brings us to our first round of public comment. So if you have a uh, comment that you would like to offer that's not uh, on the agenda this evening, Feel free to come up and state your name and that you live in T Newtown Township, and we'll take it from there. Hi, Frank McCarran, Delancey Court. McCarran. I want to have a follow-up conversation on that I brought up two years ago, and that's the uh, suggestion I had to, about hiring officers of color um, and talk about what's changed in the township and why I want to bring it up now. So um, to refresh people's memory or if you weren't here, um, this came on my radar screen from reading the consult report on the five-year plan. So we consult in their introduction at this long section about the background of the, the township and the residents of the township. And they gave information. They had a table breaking down by age, a table breaking down by income, uh, what was your education level. They had a table on job categories, who's in manufacturing, who's in this. Um, I, you know, um, they had pretty much, it was five pages, just information on all the residents, slice and dice every which way. The one thing they didn't talk about was racial demographics. Okay, I didn't think anything of it. But then when you get to section six, which was the police section, you left the introduction, I had section six. First paragraph is um, we, ha we have a full-time police department, 24, 365. Only full-time officers, no part-time. We have a contract with Wrightstown. Okay. And then the second paragraph is, of the 20,000 population, the racial demographics are as follow. 87% white, and then here's the breakdowns of the others. And that made me pause, and I said, oh, wait a minute. You, you had five pages of tables and introduction. We were talking about the residents every which way, and you didn't think racial demographics was relevant. But when you get to policing of the residents of the township, it's like the most important thing that you, you hit on first is what's the racial profile of the residents. And so um, I, I was kind of surprised. I, I really wondered how that ever got through. I mean, if I was doing a report, I would never let that go through. But I said, okay, if that's important, then the corollary is what's the racial profile of the police department? And the police department was 100% white. And since Econsult was suggesting we hire three officers, I suggested we hire three officers of color. So what's, what's changed since then? Well, one thing that's changed is instead of hiring three officers, officers in the last two years, we hired eight officers. And that has to do with the disconnect between the police chief and e-consult over staffing, right? So the police chief said, 
the 29 officers, I'm understaffed, I use this core service hours method, and I need 41 officers. The consult says, at 29 officers, you're not overstaffed, but you're already on a ratio basis compared to other townships in Bucks County at a higher ratio, so we think you're good. But then they go on to say, you know, you have four upcoming retirements under this drop program, so to better plan for that, hire three officers, uh, one in 2021 and two in 22. And so, okay, but then that translated to hiring four officers, two in 21 and two in 22, and that hired, it translated to four in addition to replacing the four who retired, except, you know, Sergeant Ambrose passed away before, I don't know if he before he retired, but I think so. Um, so we hired eight officers. And so maybe it was a reach to ask for all three officers to be officers of color if you're hiring three, but if you're hiring eight, I, didn't, I don't think of it so much as a reach. But of course, I'm saying this, I don't really know how many officers we of color we've hired at all. I'm just bringing this up. Now, the other thing that changed is um, your Human Relations Commission held a meeting last year, and they invited Karen Downer, who was the head of the NAACP for Bucks County, and they invited her to talk about policing in the township and what the person from the commission said. And so the commission is focused on representation on the, on the police force. So it wasn't just on my radar screen, it's on your commission's radar screen. They, that's what they said, that they were focused on representation on the police force. And Ms. Downer was very tactful, polite, and, and she said she was talking to all the township police, uh, all the county police departments, and representation should mirror your county's population and encourage people who attended to talk to their police department about that. So that was, that was on there. Um, the third thing that's changed is, is the population is becoming more diverse in the township. So e-consult had said it, the township was 87% white, and that was based on 2019 data. Um, a neighbor of mine is a retired teacher, and she said, why don't you look at the school data? You might get some more inf relevant information, more current information. And she showed me how to look, and I did. And it said, based on the children population, it would imply that we were 85% white. And the Census Bureau now says we're 82% white, with an increase in Asian population and, and people who identify as mixed race. So the population has become more diverse at 82%. At you know, over 33 current officers, we should have six officers of color. If, if we implement the 41, we should have eight officers of color. Um, so, and I guess the last thing that's changed is that we're not limiting ourselves to hiring from the Bucks County Consortium. I, I, ex I expressed some concern that the way that process was set up, that someone who passed all the tests would then contact the townships that they wanted to be interviewed by. So if a person of color did not want to be interviewed by us, you know, we're a passive participant. And, and we, so we, but we've actually hired officers from Philadelphia Police Department, according to the announcements I've seen. So that's, to me, a good sign. And, and I don't think this is like, hey, okay, let's snap a finger. You're going to have representation in your police force. I mean, you, you got to have people who are interested. But it would seem to me that your Human Relations Commission could take the lead on this and work with the police chief to, you know, take, make a good try to, to increase the representation. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But, um, you know, it just seems that it's, it's something worthwhile to, to pursue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCown. Any others? Good evening. My name is Valerie Mahalik. I leave, live in the uh, Newtown Walk community in Newtown Township. I hope uh, you're all doing well this evening. Um, I'm just following up on our meeting from our, we have some residents here again tonight on just a couple of um, things. Um, I did receive an email from Chairman Fisher about meeting with him and uh, Supervisor Mack um, at our crosswalk um, next week. And I just wanted to confirm that you had gotten my email about a date and time, which was Tuesday at 4. I didn't see it, but 
I'll, I'll check again. Yes, because you sent me the email Friday yep. night. I did respond on Saturday after I talked with some of my um, neighbors as to what would work for mm -hmm. them, and it would be Tuesday at Tuesday. 4, right, for the two of you okay. to be there at the crosswalk. Yeah. And Fine. the reason we say that time is because that's when the sun glare is, is evident. When we met with uh, Representative Warren last week, we met with him at 5, but now because of the change in time, um, we need to meet a little earlier. But it was really helpful to be there at the time of the sun glare to see how the visibility um, is blocked and we truly appreciate your taking the time to meet with us there the way Representative Warren did to see um, the issues that we're having um, and how people are trying to cross and all of the complications that are involved at that time of day along with other times of day. Um, the other thing that I'm asking is about is um, I mentioned in the email that we talked about December 7th for um, the crosswalk to be on the agenda. Um, I know that you have a lot going on right now with the budget, and then uh, you know, uh, November 22nd is right before the Thanksgiving recess, so we did discuss um, December 7th, which is a month out, which would give you know, enough time for uh, the traffic engineer and some other things to be um, looked into, because we would like to get it on the agenda before the close of the year. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to bring up, and really the reason for our being here tonight, is when we met with Representative Warren, he had mentioned that he had um, given you a grant, uh, and it's a multi-module transportation grant, which would cover the cost of the light. But the, cut, the cutoff date is November 14th, which is you know, right around the corner. So I wanted to see where we were at with that particular grant since the cutoff date is November 14th. We don't have an, I don't know, have an answer on that one. Uh, we can pass it on to administration to pass an answer. We are currently working on a, a grant. Senator Stanisero set aside $50,000 to look into this, there's a grant application that's due. We're not applying for a multimodal transportation fund for this for this project. It's Key, Keystone Community. Right, it's Keystone grant. Community. And that's the one for 50000 Okay, so then you're not going to use the grant that he had um, suggested? Okay. And then my other question is, um, and Mr. Lewis, maybe you could, you could answer this one. When we were at the last meeting, we talked about the ARPA funds and the 550000 allocated for the Lower Dolington um, Historical Trail, which the crosswalk falls in. The $550,000 that's allocated for the trail is the township's required match for the grant. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't cover this crosswalk. It stops at, at Frost, Frost Lane. Lane. It, it stops where? Frost Lane. The trail stops at Frost Lane. Okay. And it goes north up to uh, Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Or maybe even. <coughs> okay, so then uh, the crosswalk does not fall under the auspices of no. that. that um, no, it's outside the scope trail. of the project. Okay. All right. So um, where are we looking to have this on the December 7th agenda? Does that look like something feasible? Because when we came two weeks ago with the children, um, mm -hmm. We had asked for it to be on the agenda, you know, before the end of the year. So I just want to make sure that um, that is still something we are going to have happen. Uh, we can we can certainly put it on the agenda. I'm just not sure how much new information we'll have. I mean, we'll be glad to share whatever information we have. Okay, great. I think when you I come mean, to the crosswalk, that'll time. be helpful too, yeah. to be able to share with the other supervisors what we've been sharing. I know. Uh, Supervisor Snyder, you know, who lives right near where we are, has shared what she has experienced there. So I think that will um, be helpful as well. Okay. And then the other question is, um, some people in the community were mentioning, and I don't really understand how this process is, so perhaps you could explain it to us. You know, there's two requests that we're asking for. One is to reduce the speed limit from 35 to 25 miles per hour. That's the one request. And then the second request is for some type of blinking light, whether it's one with the strobe that gets people's attention. Um, is it easier to focus on, like I know when I've worked on installing a traffic light where I used to live, it's like a, a year process. So we know this is going to take a long time to actually get something like this accomplished. Is lowering the speed limit something that's easier to get done? I'm seeing you shake your head. <laughs> I wish. I, so <clears throat> 
the change of speed limits and signals all need to be approved by PennDOT. Yes, I what understand we're, that. What we're currently doing is gathering the information with the traffic engineers. We, they're analyzing the, the crash history. They're analyzing different metrics that they have to present to PennDOT to even be able to re make this request. That's where we're at right now. I don't even know if we can get a meeting with PennDOT by the end of the year. So I, I guess the point is that we're working towards a resolution. Yeah. However, it just takes time. It's a process. Right. And, and we, under, we understand that. We just want to understand where we're at. And if the speed limit was a, a more doable thing in the near future than the, the installation of and the funding of a traffic light or a blinking light. And, and looking down to the other end, I see our engineer is, has an answer or has some, no, something Mike, to contribute. No, yeah, Mike, Mr. Lewis summarized it. The first step would yes. be looking at the speed limit reduction. That's what our office is looking into, okay. taking measurements and reviewing the crash data and looking at, and we're going to actually take speed measurements as well. So that's sort yeah. of where we're at right now. Once that happens, we'll then be able to make the further recommendations for the speed reduction, and then Great. if so, what type of flashing beacon would Great. be appropriate. Yeah. When, when we were out there with Representative Warren, one of uh, my neighbors was actually able to pull up people's speed from his phone. And most of them were way above 35 miles per hour, which is, it's currently 35 miles per hour. So. I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you, everyone. That brings us to, I believe, reports of boards and commissions. Let me make sure. And... I believe that brings us to Ms. Driscoll for the Planning Commission. Hi, good evening. Peggy Driscoll, Chair of the Newtown Township Planning Commission. Uh, we had no township business on our agenda last week, so we met strictly to discuss a joint comprehensive plan. Uh, the Commission divided the plan into eight principles. Each member read and researched one principle and its accompanying strategies and led discussion of any edits, concerns, and changes. Generally, generally, we were in agreement that the plan serves as a broad guide to development, redevelopment, and we're supportive of it. We did discuss some changes in the area that should be explored, in the areas that should be explored further, including guidance toward new zoning for new technologies and new uses, uses that did not even exist at the first comp plan. We discussed methods to aid in the preservation of historic structures. We reviewed the current and future status of our available open space. Each member will submit a written summary, which we will edit before making specific recommendations to the supervisors. A few of our newer members had some confusion about preservation of open space and the meaning of ag soils, steep slopes, conservation management, and how consideration of these terms can impact our recommendations for new development or property improvements. We would like to reinstitute our practice of having a brief training session with our professionals at the start of each new year. Okay, and I'd also like to mention that years ago when uh, new members came on planning, we got copies of the SALDO, the Subdivision and Land Development Ordinances, and the JMZ, the, the Joint Municipal Zoning Ordinances, at our first meeting. And uh, I don't know, is there an uh, electronic electronic uh, copy of all those, can they all be forwarded to me and I'll forward them to our new planning commission members? Okay, thank you. And that was all we had. <clears throat> was uh, our planner able to inform folks about the ag soils and the steep slopes? Yes, and, yes. And the next meeting is, because I want to try to make the next meeting. Okay. Uh, we do, I just got the uh, agenda today. We do have a couple yes. uh, items, zoning items, I believe, on our agenda. Is it next Tuesday? Uh, yes. I'll come from Newtown Yardley Road and I'll come here. Okay. Any other any other questions for Ms. Driscoll? No. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, <clears throat> board member reports. Um, I just want to recognize that we had a uh, very good voter turnout at the election, at the voting yesterday. Uh, I looked on the county website, they said 65, and I think, I know uh, my poll at the American Legion, and, and uh, 
Mr. Davis uh, was probably helpful in promoting. We get, I think we got up to like 70%. Yeah, they had a pass with a pretty high margin. Yes. So, um, is everybody doing our civic duty? I don't want to steal too much thunder from the chief, but I noticed in a couple of, couple of places that I was reading about deer collisions. I think maybe it was something in the patch, or in the uh, patch and the advance. Uh, this is the time of year when the, when the deer are out running across the road in front of cars, so just be careful. Uh, other than that, Mr. Uh, Mack? Uh, I have nothing to report. Okay. Ms. Snyder? I would only like to mention some things from Parks and Rec that they would like everybody to hear. Pre-register today for the following upcoming programs, Color Changing Potions Class, Lego Mini Art Camp, Super Soccer Stars Thanksgiving Break Camp, Save the date. Our annual holiday craft fair is Saturday, November 19th from 10 to 3 here at the Township Building. And a reminder, the offices will be closed Friday, November 11th in observation of Veterans Day. Thank you to all who have served. We will reopen on Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. Thank you, Ms. Snyder. Mr. Calabro, do you have anything? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to okay. piggyback on your uh, stating about how how well Election Day went, and with, vet with Veterans Day being Friday, it's a good segue into remembering our veterans, uh, and that's probably the reason why we should respect Election Day, is because of all the veterans that fought for us to uh, honor the American flag and to also... On, on election day, what I always say is it's, we're all the most powerful person in the world when we walk into that, uh, into that booth to make, uh, cast our votes. So, uh, you know any veterans, go out there and hug them, kiss them if you want to. They're very important to our country, and I just think it's a great thing that uh, election day was so close to Veterans Day. Thank you very much. Mr. Veteran? And I thank you. I have, nothing, I have nothing to report. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, no public hearing, but we do have land development this evening. And I asked Mr. Edelman to come up. And any of your entourage that cares to join you? Uh, try to only bring one person up with me. But good evening, Greg Edelman here on behalf of Toll Brothers. And uh, we're here on the uh, continuation of the settlement agreement that this board approved um, earlier this year with respect to development of a portion of the All Saints property. Um, the, for a refresher, the overall property um, is approximately 158 acres of the All Saints Cemetery. It's not the entire property. The proposed development area is approximately 22 plus or minus acres of that 158 with about 98 acres or so of open space that will be offered to dedication for the township. Um, as you recall, this board approved the proposed layout as part of a settlement agreement for the proposed development of 45 single family homes with access from um, a single access from Dorm Road directly adjacent to North Drive, and an emergency access from a cul-de-sac uh, located in the um, northeastern corner of the property. There is no access proposed to come on or off of Twining Bridge Road. As part of the overall development and the settlement agreement, the proposal includes substantial buffering and berming around the perimeter of the property as well as a connection to the townships, I think it's the MI6 trail, is that correct? close enough, um, to go around the perimeter of the property as well. The um, overall property is delineated on the site plan. I think, what are we showing up here, John, the aerial? The aerial photo, it's depicted in white. Um, it's gone through the review process a couple of times by your township engineer and township planner. 
Under the settlement agreement, that's the proposed process where it goes through consultant review until such time as your consultants certify that the plan has been prepared consistent with the attachments to the settlement agreement as well as the terms of the settlement agreement, which uh, we believe it has. The Planning Commission reviewed the uh, settlement plan and recommended approval um, a couple weeks ago. And uh, we're here this evening for the, the board to do the same. It's being proposed as a preliminary slash final plan. There were a couple of additional uh, waivers added um, and requested. Um, two or three of them were dealing with drafting standards and not showing existing features. And then another two were dealing with some additional stormwater waivers dealing with um, the, I believe, infiltration uh, grade at the base and also um, the draining time, I believe. Is that correct? So those have all been reviewed as well by your township engineer, and I don't believe there's any objections to the additional waivers that have been requested beyond that which was already approved as part of the settlement agreement. So that's really an overview. The plan has not changed in its layout. It's consistent with what this board had approved back in February, and we're seeking uh, the approval pursuant to the settlement agreement again this evening. But we're happy to answer any questions the board may have with respect to what's being proposed this evening. I guess I have one or, sure, one or two questions. Um, I, I noticed there are a couple of outstanding approvals that you need. Yes, that's correct. And so, you want to go over those? And sure. We're still uh, getting the uh, proceeding to get the highway occupancy permit uh, from PennDOT for the access. Um, we're still also working on the um, sewer approval, I believe, uh, for a planning module. Um, there will also be, I believe, a Part 2 permit associated with that for an upgrade to a pump station that we're working with the authority on as well. So those are outstanding permits. We're working on the NPDES for storm order, which has been submitted. And I believe your township's been copied on all of these submissions, uh, and they're aware of the specifics. And those will all be conditions? Absolutely. Approval. Correct. We'll have to get those prior to recording. There was one other uh, about a maintenance maintenance agreement. I think that was the only thing that only other thing that wasn't like a, a cut comment only. Um, stormwater maintenance agreement. Yeah, for yes. Yes, that's standard. The stormwater operations and maintenance agreement for the best management practices. Uh, pretty standard that uh, we'll have to enter into that with respect to the post-construction stormwater management facilities. And they will be recorded, that agreement will be recorded against the property. Um, it requires us to follow the permit requirements of NPDES and anything else that the township requires in terms of its stormwater management ordinance with respect to the long-term and operation of those stormwater management facilities on the property. Anybody else have questions for the applicant? If I might, Mr. Hi, John. Uh, I know that at the Planning Commission, uh, we had a discussion about the old farmhouse. And I know in the uh, settlement agreement, it mm -hmm. said it would be destroyed. Right. But the, the Joint the Historic Commission has uh, would have to issue a permit. And they would like to uh, get access to the property to see if it's worth preserving, and uh, is that okay? I mean, is that something? Yeah, yes, I mean, we, as we stated in the Planning Commission, it's open space that will be dedicated to the township. So whatever the township would like to do is, is fine from our end. I think the discussions we had during the negotiations was to have that demolished so that when the township took the open space, there wouldn't be any maintenance obligation imposed on the township. If the township would like to further evaluate that, we're certainly open to allow that to occur. We're not going to run to demolish it if the township wants to look at it as part of their um, acceptance of the open space area. I think that was the consensus of, of the board. And it's just basically, at this point, giving the Joint Historic Commission uh, access. I know there's a no trespassing right. and all that. I, I don't, I don't want them to get shot for going <laughs> private property. No, we're, we're happy to coordinate access 
I um, mean, you can go through Micah or Dave, and we can coordinate that they could get access so they can take okay, a look at great, the structure. Thank you. You're welcome. Just got to work out the timing. That's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Any others? Just one, one question. You had mentioned you're waiting for approval from the uh, sewer authority. Yeah. Well, yes, with respect to the sewer planning approval, we're going through the process, and we're working with the sewer authority on an agreement with respect to upgrading the uh, pump station. I, I can't remember the name of which one it is. So off the top of my head, I'm not, I'm not remembering which one it is, but there's a pump station downstream that needs to be upgraded, and we're working on working with the authority to not just expand it for, for this project, but also to help with some of their existing needs. Okay. So, so, I mean, I'll be under the assumption there are enough EDUs available yes. for the project. Yes, oh, right. Okay. The EDUs were actually set aside prior to this approval um, as part of your overall Act 537 base plan update. Um, well, I believe it was 50-plus EDUs. We're only at 45, so there's plenty of capacity already been allocated for the project. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Sander, if we... <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if the board is of a mind, uh, uh, it would be a motion to grant preliminary and final land development approval to Newtown AOP uh, at Durham and Twining Bridge Roads, Newtown, Pennsylvania, tax map parcel numbers 29-121, 29-316, 29-318, 29-319, consisting of 62 sheets prepared by ESE consultants dated May 6, 2022 and last revised August 31st, 2022 in the Conservation Management Zoning District for use B12 single-family detached cluster development on 157.07 acres subject to the following conditions. One, that the applicant comply with the settlement agreement uh, between the applicant and the township dated February 23rd, 2022. Uh, second, that the applicant comply with the CKS engineer's review letter dated September 19th, 2022. Third, that the applicant comply with the um, uh, Remington Vernick engineer's review letter dated September 27th, 2022, and the Remington and Vernick engineer's traffic review letter dated September 27, 2022. Fourth, that the applicant comply with the Newtown EMS letter dated September 15, 2022. Fifth, that the applicant shall secure any and all permits required from any agencies having jurisdiction over this project, including the township, Bucks County, the state and federal governments, including but not limited to the Bucks County Conservation District, PennDOT, and the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Sixth, that the applicant shall provide a will serve or appropriate agreement letter from the appropriate water and sewer agencies confirming the availability of public water and public sewer to the project. Seven, that the uh, applicant shall comply with the township engineer's recommendation as to stormwater management and best management practices and that the applicant shall execute a stormwater management agreement in a form acceptable to the township. Eighth, the applicant will secure a new adequacy letter if the erosion and sedimentation control plan is revised and or such letter is required by the Bucks County Conservation District. Ninth, the applicant shall fund and execute development and financial security agreements in a form satisfactory to the Board of Supervisors and the Township Solicitor. Tenth, that the applicant shall execute a declaration of unilateral restrictions and covenants in a form acceptable to the Township Solicitor and Board of Supervisors as it relates to the notes contained on the plan, which said declaration shall be recorded along with the final plan. Eleventh, that all review and professional fees shall be paid by the applicant as required by the Township Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance for prior reviews and those in connection with this approval. Uh, last condition is twelfth, uh, that the Newtown Joint Historic Commission will be given access to the property to document any historic structures before issuing uh, demolition permits 
And finally, that the waivers set forth in the ESE consultant's letter dated October 12th, 2022 are hereby granted by the board. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? <clears throat> Please state your name. John DeAprile, Newtown Grant. I'm coming here at this point as a member of the Master Board of Directors, and uh, last time these gentlemen were here from Toll Brothers, I had brought up that the uh, Board of Directors had asked not to have through traffic from this new development into Newtown Grant. Uh, just a few months ago, we had a pedestrian and her dog hit right on the drive. Uh, you know, with this extra traffic and where they're coming in at, is probably the most densely populated part right at the traffic light there. Uh, we don't want to see the through traffic. So right in, right out, pork chops, whatever. I'm not an engineer, but I've seen it done before at, at developments. So they can't come straight across with their traffic. You know, this is the largest development in Bucks County. I keep on telling you that. 1,744 homes. So, I mean, you want to send some more traffic through there? I mean, you can't stop them from going through any other way, but we don't want them to come straight across. Secondly, last meeting, you shot down Wawa. I know it wasn't much, much help from the board, uh, giving the reasons why I seen Mr. Sanders' letter, if it was true or not. It happened to be a copy of it posted online. And uh, one of the reasons was, Preliminary as final plan, and one of the three reasons Mr. Sander had on his letter. So here's another preliminary as final. You know, uh, are you blinded by the fact that Toll Brothers is giving you this land and you're going to give them everything they want? Toll Brothers has a history of doing that, getting what they want. So uh, I, I ask you to think that. Newtown Grant asks you to think that. Do not let them come straight through from the development. I mean, you had uh, all the people come up here and cry from uh, uh, Worthington Mill Road all the way down as far as Knob Hill. If traffic would have went that far, they would probably came out to 413 anyway. But you had those people crying, and they got their way, didn't they? This is the largest development in Bucks County. Do not let the traffic go through. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeAprile. Hello everyone, Bradley Cooper, uh, Newtown Grant resident, and uh, I've been living here since uh, 1999, and um, the uh, entrance and exit where they uh, put the uh, traffic light in about 15, 14, 13 years ago about, um, was made because the residents complained that it was too difficult to make a left and a right turn. Also that there's a lot of uh, younger drivers that um, get out of that uh, uh, development in that location or whatever. It was not meant to be a four-way stop. It was never meant to use that light in that capacity, only to help the turning of left and right at that part of Newtown Grant. Um, there is a lot of traffic that does, you know, drive on uh, Durham Road, even though a lot of people, you know, will have their opinions on that. Um, but uh, a couple things. First off, the open space. Um, I thought we're supposed to be preserving open space, the land, the, you know, the history of Newtown. I thought that's what we're supposed to be doing, not allowing everybody that they want to, like Oprah Winfrey just giving out, you get land, you get land, you get land, and they could do whatever they want with it. I think we need to start changing and working with the zoning board and changing our zoning laws that a lot of townships have that are outdated that allow people just to come in here and decide what we can do with the land because this zoning's been 30 years, 20 years outdated or whatever. It hasn't been updated to recent times where we can, you know, be more objective of what comes in and what comes out of the township. Um, historic preservation. We have farms in different places that are 
uh, been in Newtown for decades. They represent Newtown. People know them because of the historic uh, nature of them. And we're just saying that, oh, they should be just demolished because they have the zoning rights to do that. I don't think that that's right, that we take historic places that have been here for decades. Uh, may it be crumbling or something? Maybe, you know, spend a little money and preserve it or whatever. Don't just say, oh, because it's old and they got the land, they could use it. It's theirs. They could take it or whatever. Um, uh, uh, water uh, on uh, Twining Bridge Road is horrible uh, at different days or whatever. If you see it rain pretty hard, the storm drains on the bottom, they get full up with water or whatever. The storm uh, system and drainage system in that area doesn't seem to be adequate to put 15, 20, 30, 40, 90 homes or whatever on there. It's going to take some extensive work to get that to, you know, be suffice for people to be able to drive on that road and not have water two feet on the corners of the turns that are sometimes difficult when buses and cars are uh, trying to get around each other. Um, there's a lot of animals on that road. Um, I've hit a couple of deer because they like to run across people's lawns and the farm that's right there. Um, you can't see them. They dart out there. It could be 2 o'clock in the morning. It could be 10 o'clock um, in the afternoon. It doesn't matter. They're out there gra grazing and roaming around or whatever because we have a lot of open space and parks that uh, farm animals like deer, for instance, like to hang around in or whatever. When we build this development, where are they going to go? Are they going to be sitting on the middle of the road and we're going to hit them? Uh, I don't understand what, you know, how we're going to get a development and take care of people driving on that road and not have a deer hit them because we're darting out in front of people's homes that you can't see or whatever that I personally have hit or whatever. And if that happens or whatever, am I going to be able to take my uh, car damage and say, hey, you guys pay at the township because we're allowing no space for animals to roam around that's not in the middle of the road? And... Um, there's a farm right there, and we're not even considering the farmer. We're taking the farm and saying, oh, let's put this right in front of the farm or whatever. There's been articles out there that you can find that there's going to be potential shortages of food coming up this uh, Thanksgiving or whatever. You know, whatever it may be, I don't know exactly, but that's going to be a, uh, another thing that we're getting rid of is farms here, farms there, whatever. And what are we going to do? Ask Ukraine or China or Russia, hey, can we borrow some of your food or whatever because we took all of our farms and got rid of them? I think we need to do a better job of working with uh, zoning, making sure that we can preserve Newtown and keep Newtown, you know, uh, not being overrun with, you know, every corner of it being something um, and trying to keep farms intact and keeping people safe by not allowing animals to get on the middle of the road because of developing and taking away space that they can roam around or whatever. So I think we need to do a little better um, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Any others? And any other further comments from the board? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of uh, approving the final plan, preliminary final plan for um, Toll Brothers uh, AOP, um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pat, motion passes 5 0. Great. Thank you very much for your time this evening. It was nice to see everyone. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I see that there's no. Um, engineers report I don't know, was there anything you needed to add to yeah I'd like to give a quick update if we don't mind um, sure. this was mentioned earlier but the township has been allocated um, some additional funding through the Keystone communities um, mm -hmm. additional appropriations so we are preparing an application for that um, for the Sycamore Street and Silo Drive um, rapid flashing beacons that we okay. had previously proposed. So we're working to prepare that application. So we anticipate by next meeting you'll have the resolution for your approval for that. Um, and then another update on the Bricksmore Village in Newtown post development traffic study. Uh, we had a meeting with Langan, the design engineer, regarding mm -hmm. the improvements um, probably two weeks ago. We reviewed with them a few things that we were thinking could improve. Um, the circulation, the traffic in there regarding, you know, extending some turn lanes, adding additional signage. So they're generally agreeable to that. So our next step is we're going to issue formal recommendations to them and then um, they can take it from there. So um, 
sort of just an ongoing process with them at this point, but that's, you know, the most recent step that we've taken. So happy to answer any questions. I'm sorry, but, you know, my thing is the Lower Darlington Trail. Yes, the trail. And I know <laughs> that uh, it was said that they were going to begin work on moving the underground cables today, I believe it was. They were supposed to be out there today. I have a call in. Don't know what happened. <laughs> Um, we'll keep pushing them and hopefully I can give you an update tomorrow. Okay, thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Solicitor, we're back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the uh, first item on our report, it does not <clears throat> appear that uh, representatives of the Cheltenham uh, Township Industrial Development Authority are in the room uh, yet. Um, so I'd like to just skip over that item for now and proceed okay. to the other two if, if give them sure. a chance to, uh, to get here. Um, the uh, second item on our report is consideration of the enactment of an ordinance establishing a handicapped parking space uh, for 135 Canterbury Court uh, as the board authorized uh, advertisement of this at its last meeting. Uh, it would require a motion to enact uh, ordinance number 2022-0-4, uh, establishing a handicapped parking space for 135 Canterbury Court. I'll make the motion. motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, any comments from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Uh, all those in favor of approving the ordinance, enacting the ordinance uh, for the parking space at 135 Canterbury Court, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 nothing. Uh, thank you. I do see that Ms. Ockrock has uh, entered the uh, room and we are ready for her. Uh, this is the matter of the consideration by the board of a resolution uh, approving Cheltenham Township Industrial Development Authority's financing for Holy Family University. Uh, Holy Family University acquired the property that was formerly used uh, by LaSalle University and plans to continue to use it for educational uh, purposes. Um, however, they are um, proposing to make improvements to that property and uh, have um, obtained financing for that project through the Cheltenham Township uh, IDA, uh, which uh, Ms. Ockrock uh, represents. Um, according to federal law, uh, a hearing was held by Cheltenham Township uh, on uh, October 19th, at which time the uh, financing was approved. And because the board uh, is the governing body of the township in which the property is located, this board must also uh, review the matter and um, adopt a resolution approving the financing as well. The action by the board does not um, uh, provide any um, obligation or duty on the board. No money is being spent. This is just approving a deal that is happening by, with Holy Family University within the township's borders. Uh, Ms. Ockrock, if you want to expand on that a little bit, by all means, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Dave. Um, you've said it all. But, and I know you've had a long meeting already, and um, I, would, I don't know if you all received a copy of the proposed resolution. If you did, the most important part is on the second page, item number two, and to reiterate what Dave said is that you're in no way pledging any of the taxing power or funds of the township. Um, you have no liability for repayment or any other liability with regard to this financing. It is really a pro forma matter that is required for us to take this action by a section of the Internal Revenue Code 147F. And um, there was what's called a TEFRA hearing held at Cheltenham Industrial Development Authority. Also, the applicant has filed applications with uh, the Department of Community and Economic Development. Uh, DCD has already reviewed that. We're waiting for this last part, the uh, resolution from this township. 
would be the item to complete that application. Um, the property and the building that exists was already in educational use, and that is going to be uh, continued to be used that way by Holy Family University. Um, they already have a presence in the township and another nearby location, and this would be an expansion for them. And it, it just, uh, apparently they had thought about expanding that other location, but um, this became available and it certainly was much more cost effective because it really meets their needs. Um, we envision, based on the information from the, the applicant, the borrower, uh, you know, that certainly they're going to be hiring um, and it brings in students to the area as well. So it, it serves the purpose of economic development. Uh, the school is a 501c3 nonprofit educational use, which qualifies for tax exempt financing under the Internal Revenue Code. Um, so, you know, that has all been vetted out by the uh, Industrial Development Authority. If anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer. What we're seeking is for, um, you know, the board to approve this and to execute the resolution. Thank you. But let me add, um, Merrill, that um, this, we're not approving any land development or any project at all. If any kind of land development is required going forward, which is, I don't think we know at this point, um, then it'll have to come before the board for a full review like any other land development. So we're not giving approval to any kind of development at this time. That. Yeah, there you go. Okay. They don't have any immediate plans for um, application for any development right now. If the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to adopt uh, resolution number 2022-R-23 approving the Cheltenham Township IDA's uh, financing for Holy Family University. We have a motion. So moved. Do we have a second? Okay, there's a motion and a second. Thank you. Um, any, uh, there you go. Uh, my fingers are not. Once I get it to red. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, may I get a copy of the signed resolution or can I receive that tomorrow perhaps? Tomorrow? Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Well, we haven't voted yet, but. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have details, a motion and a details. second. Details, details. Right. I was just going to mention you pointed out the, the item that I that I was uh, interested in seeing, and that was number two. On the, yes. That, that it does not take any uh, authority we have to to tax or uh, regulate. But and and notice was given of the meeting both here and uh, through Cheltenham advertisement. Very good. Uh, was there any other comments or discussion from the board? Any from the any from the public? Okay. Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? But motion passes. Resolu the resolution passes five zero. Thank you. And we will get that signed. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Last item on our agenda is consideration of an ordinance amending the stormwater management ordinance. Uh, this is uh, a requirement of the township's uh, NPDES uh, permit and um, was drafted by the township engineer. Uh, it has been advertised for consideration by the board and if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to uh, enact ordinance number 2022 O-5, uh, adopting uh, amendments to the Stormwater Management Ordinance. Do we have such a motion? I'll, I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I guess I'll second. Okay. Now, we can, now if there's any questions, we can entertain any questions. This is just merely an, an update of... of 
things that needed to be changed. Or yeah, so it's a minor yeah. update. Basically, the township's ordinance is pretty consistent with DEP's model ordinance. So as part of the permit this year, we're just required to update the township's ordinance to make sure that it includes everything with DEP's recommended model. So really, it's just adding a few sections. It's, it's not a lot of language change, but some, some definitions and requirements for as-builts for that's developments. What, that's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have questions? Uh, any from any? Well, let me get a motion on the floor. Uh, do we have a motion to um, approve this ordinance? Yeah, yeah we did that. We did that. Okay, I'm trying to go too fast. That's okay. There's now a motion and a second. Can, now we can ask the public. Absolutely. Any input from the public? Seeing none. I'll call the question. All those in favor of en 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 enacting the ordinance or for the updates to our uh, stormwater management ordinance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five nothing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes our report. Great. That brings us to manager's report, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to note before we get started, <coughs> the board met an executive session regarding pending litigation uh, related to the Wawa application prior to the meeting. General fund balance as of this evening is $6,494,094. <clears throat> Plan expirations before the board with no action required, and we have Chief Hearn here tonight for the monthly chief, uh, police chief's report. Evening, Chief. Good evening, board members. Good evening. October 2022 police report. We documented 1,790 calls for service, logged over 22,000 miles in our patrol fleet, we had 16 arrests, two were for assault, one was assault on police and one's domestic related, one violation of protection from abuse order, two violations for narcotics, and 11 DUIs. There were 22 cases referred to de detectives, four crime scenes were processed, some of which included a fatal crash, three thefts, harassment, multiple frauds, two death investigations, and two child line investigations. There were 76 traffic crashes, 221 deer citations, uh, two, 221 citations were issued, 225 warnings issued. Regarding our traffic crashes, we do have 24 deer related. Notable jobs, both on 1012 and 1022, Newtown Police responded for two SWAT activations for barricaded subjects. Uh, they were outside of our immediate area, but part of our response zone, and uh, they were successfully resolved. Unfortunately, on 1023, uh, our officers responded to a tragic death of a 15-year-old 15, 15 for a gun accidental discharge. Um, he uh, succumbed to his wounds. Uh, selective enforcement. We had two truck enforcement details uh, involving 25 inspections, 19 citations, 26 warnings, five vehicles were placed out of service, four drivers were placed out of service, and one vehicle was towed. Township had two reinforcement initiatives, one for occupant safety and one for uh, aggressive driving. And two uh, details netted $4,492 back from a grant that we applied for, for uh, reimbursement of the overtime for the officers. Traf uh, significant events. On October 7th, we did have a fatal vehicle crash on Lower Dullington Road between Everett and Yorkshire. The 63-year-old male operator uh, succumbed to his wounds as well in St. Mary's Hospital. On 10-13, we had a auto pedestrian, uh, auto versus bicyclist struck at South Eagle and Swamp Road. It was actually the bicyclist's fault um, and it crashed into the rear of the vehicle. Um, slow down, put your cell phones down, yield to pedestrians and crosswalks as usual. Some public service announcements. We had our national drug take back on October 29th. We collected over 310 pounds of unwanted narcotics, both at the event and at our headquarters. We had a pack to patrol car event on Saturday, October 29th at the Acme as well. We'd like to thank our neighbors for their generous uh, donations to that event. Mailbox thefts to every drive location. We've received, I think, five total fraud reports from checks being washed from that location. That is continually under investigation. We have been in contact with the uh, attorney, uh, with the uh, postal inspector. They are working on replacing the box. 
and install some type of camera or video surveillance for that location. So until that is actually enacted, I would strongly encourage people to drop their mail off inside the postal facility. Once again, the deer collisions are up. Pay attention to deer's crossing. Um, put your cell phones down, slow down, use your high beams when available. Do not swerve on the oncoming traffic. If you see one, there's probably more than one. And the scams, uh, grandparent scams, arrest, uh, grandson's locked up, we got a flat tire, they need money. They're asking to send money, do not send it. It's continuing to happen every day of the week. Um, especially with the holidays coming up, they're gonna be scammed left and right. So I would encourage, make sure you pay attention to your neighbors, your friends, your relatives, make sure they're not being scammed. And just a reminder on December 4th at 2 p.m. is the Newtown Holiday Parade. There will be road closures in effect uh, beginning probably around noon that day. So pay attention and I hope to see you there. Happy to answer your question. Any questions? Any questions for the chief? Thank you, Chief. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Final item under my report, Mr. Chairman, is the consideration to purchase two uh, Ford F-350 trucks from Chapman Auto. These were vehicles that we were intending to order earlier this year. However, the window of opportunity never opened to place those orders. So the appropriate motion would be consideration to purchase two Ford trucks from Chapman Auto through CoStars in a combined amount of $159,684. Do we have such a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Got a motion and a second, so we have it on the floor. Um, these these were budgeted in, in the 2022 year. That's so correct. They're in, they're in the uh, capital plan for 2022. Um, the price is a little higher than we had budgeted, uh, about $9,684 worth. So they've already been budgeted. They just weren't available. And they, yeah, I guess they still, still really actually aren't available. This is, this is how it's going to be for the foreseeable future. We have a week's worth of time to place orders for vehicles. Wow. All right. Any other discussion from the board? And these are two F-350s? That's correct, yes. Upfitted for plow, Plow, snow yep, plowing. for plowing, Very salting, important. maintenance, road maintenance. Yep. Good. Uh, any other com comments from the board? From the public, any comments? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of um, what are we doing with these? Uh, the, submitting the per capital purchase request for two. Vehicles for, for the public works, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. That's all I have under my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All Mr. Right. Chairman, I have a question for uh, Mr. Lewis. Sure. In your um, uh, manager's letter, you mentioned the 2021 financial audit, and you distributed that? That's correct. I was quite uh, surprised to see at the top of their audit uh, two significant risks identified. I've never seen that before. Can you um, give me further information about that? I'll have to look in. I don't have that in front of me right now. I mean, one says risk of management override of internal controls. Yeah, no, I, I need to take a look at it. I don't know what that means. You didn't talk to the auditor about this, the conclusion of these, about these risks? I, no, I haven't talked to the auditor after they, they submitted it. When do we get the chance to have the auditor come here and actually answer some of these questions that I might have? I can ask them, I, I can ask them their availability. Uh, well, can we have him here the next meeting, possibly? Possibly. I don't, I don't know if they're available. Well, we do pay them, right? Okay. Yes. And I guess we also need to see what, what else is going on in that meeting. But, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a fairly routine thing to do is have the auditor come. So Well, I've looked at other, um, I haven't ever seen this before. 
and it says significant risks. So I think the sooner we know more about this, the better. All right. Okay, any other comments? We'll move on to the minutes, bills, lists, and reports. Ms. Snyder. I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting dated October 26th. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? I just have one request of sure. our uh, recording secretary. There's two L's in Philip. I know you didn't do this, but I hate to be a stickler, but but my mother and father named me with two L's, so I just uh, would like to honor them. Thank you. And Alan's one L. Alan's one L. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Right. Oh, I didn't see that mistake, but hey. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, a motion and a second and a clarification. Um, have any other discussion from the board, from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor say aye. Of, of accepting the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Like to make a motion to pay our bills in the amount of two hundred and eighty two thousand five hundred and fifty six dollars and forty eight cents. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Don't all jump in at the same time. I'll, I'll, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion about the bills list? Do we have any comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of paying our bills for, uh, as, as found on the November 9th bills list, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Four, motion passes 4-1. And finally, I'd like to make a motion to approve the total of interfund transfers in the, in the amount of 300395 Dollars and twenty-seven cents. A motion and a second. Um, do we have any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? I'll call the question. Those in favor of uh, approving the interfund transfers for November 9th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five nothing. Okay, that brings us to our second round of public comment. Do we have any second round? Do it again. John DA from New Tank Ramp, biggest and the best, no matter how much you guys try to make it uh, not the best. Um, wasn't surprised it was Toll Brothers, but uh, you know, you just uh, made uh, over 2,000 residents in Newtown mad by letting the traffic come through from this new development that, uh, you know, conservation management, you let them build houses there, okay, all right. Um, of course, one of you guys up there is just worried about a trail on his side of town. He only worries about his side of town anyway. But, um, you know, uh, there's another guy that comes up here, and he complains about the police. Complains about the, all the time he's complaining about the police. You want to buy cars, he complains about you not hiring right people. I mean, what's wrong with him? Huh? He lives in a million-dollar house. What do you do? Thanks. Any other comments? All right, we'll move on to old business. And under old business, we have the 2023 budget discussion and consideration to adopt the 2023 budget. Um, I can provide a little context and we can go, go from there. And Mr. Lewis, please feel free to, <clears throat> I thought that would help. Um, please feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. Um, the current budget has a 
two mil increase designated for the fire tax, uh, and one, one mil is designated for recruitment, and the other is for recruitment and retention of volunteers. And the other mill is um, targeted to uh, the, the capital fund uh, for a truck that needs to be purchased on, on or about 2025. Um, at yesterday's election, uh, we passed a 0.5 mil voter referendum uh, for the Newtown Ambulance Squad for EMS services. Uh, so we have a two mil increase for the fire tax, designated for the fire tax, and we have a half mil designated by voter, re vo voter referendum for the ambulance squad. In addition, there's a minimal uh, one eighth of a mil or 1.125 mils uh, for debt service fund to take care of a slight bump in our debt, debt service for this building. Uh, all that amounts to uh, 2.625 uh, if, if approved, and that 2.625 mills is approximately $100 per year, uh, or uh, if you will, uh, $8, $9 a year, $8, $9 a month, I'm sorry. Um, at uh, the last meeting, at, at a previous meeting, Mr. Lewis showed us that Newtown Township is still projected to be in the bottom third. Uh, actually, that, that's, that's some research that I did. We're in the bottom third of municipalities in, in our uh, property tax rate. So and we're like 17th or 18th, and that's before taking into consideration um, municipalities that may other municipalities below us that may raise their uh, millage already as well. So um, mis what Mr. Lewis showed us was a comparison of mun municipalities uh, surrounding us uh, that uh, have a wage tax. And we, I believe we were, we were the lowest, um, the lowest one, have an EIT, have an earned, earned income tax. Um, the, <clears throat> it's, it's important to have high quality fire and EMS services. It helps keep our insurance rates low. And I mean, if we, if we were to ignore uh, our fire services and, and to the point where they degraded, it could actually raise our insurance rates and that, and that might be at least $5 a month. So, for that, for those reasons, um, I'm, I'm inclined to uh, think about passing this uh, or uh, this budget. Uh, I would be interested in what some of the other supervisors think. If those, yes, Ms. Snyder. Thank you. I'm a little concerned about the tax rates. Uh, people have real economic concerns, and I know that $100 per year is not a lot. But at this time, when people are struggling, um, I'm not sure this is the right time for this high of a tax raise. I'd like to see if possibly we can uh, find some middle ground and uh, not put this, uh, we're already doing emergency services. And uh, I'd like to see what uh, all you know, other supervisors think about uh, the increase in taxes. And if you think it's appropriate for this time, I'm, like I said, I'm thinking that uh, that might be too much at this time for people to bear. And I know we live in an affluent community, but people are really struggling. And that does concern me. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, you mentioned that the one, there's a one mil uh, tax for uh, the Newtown Fire Association for recruitment and volunteer, and um, 
retention. However, that's not how it was uh, stated in the manager's letter. It said that uh, hopefully, you know, it was more of a hope that they would use it for that. However, it goes into their general fund. It doesn't, we have no control over how they use that money once it goes into the general fund. So for example, I note that the Newtown Fire Association budget for 2022 called for nearly 129,000 to be used for member retention. Whereas as, September 20, as of September, only about 7,000 was spent on that. So, you know, my concern is you're giving them $325,000 maybe, expecting it all to be used for retention and recruitment, whereas the history shows that they don't use that money, that amount of money. So I'm concerned about that. I would suggest that instead of two mills going to the Newtown Fire Association, I think the other one mill was for uh, the capital uh, expense, usually for a new fire truck. Uh, I would say a one mill increase for both uses. So uh, taking one mill off of that. Uh, the other problem I have with the uh, budget, the way it was presented, was the fact that you have three items on there in the budget, uh, general fund, $390,000, taking money out of the ARP uh, rescue fund, uh, designated for certain things like uh, you know, software, uh, you know, increase in technology and so forth, and road construction. I don't have any qualms about that, but I think uh, this should be taken out of the general fund. We still have ARPA, we still have nearly a million dollars in ARPA, and we should use the process we've been using previously to discuss each one of these things and approve the use of ARPA funds for each one of these things, rather than putting it into an expense right away in the general fund without any discussion from the board. Uh, taking together, that would, you know, save another mill, basically, and replace it with money from the opera fund once we do agree with it. Um, so basically, I, you know, would like to see, rather than 2.625 mills, I would rather see something more like 1.5 mills that would include the 0.5 mil from uh, the referendum for the uh, Newtown Ambulance Squad. I have another concern about that because the referendum stated for the Newtown Ambulance Squad and other emergency services. I hope that uh, we continue to use that money for the Newtown Ambulance Squad, but there may be new uh, boards of supervisors come along that decide to use that money for some other emergency services. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's true or not, but that's the way I was reading it. And the 0.125 mil increase for debt fund, I mean, come on, <laughs> that's uh, $40,000. We, we don't need to add that as tax. We can take it out of the, uh, out of the general fund uh, and still have, by my calculation, over 10% uh, in the reserve fund. So that's my opinion. Anyone else? I have a, a couple questions for uh, Mr. Lewis. Um, can you refresh my memory? I, don't, I think we were around almost or 1.9 million for ARPA funds. Is that correct? Originally? It was, it, it was over two million. Two. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I was going through my emails and I found that 1.9. I wasn't sure where we were. Um, of that, do you have any idea, ballpark, of what might be left? So, I believe the way it was laid out in the plan, there's 70, $76,000 left after we accounted for the expenditures that were identified. 
for next year. It includes next year. Right. So then after that, there is no other of those funds left or something? No, those funds need to be allocated by, by the end of next year, and they need to be expended by 2026. Okay. But there are some of those things, and <coughs> as far as the ARPA funds are concerned, that uh, we might not need to uh, spend them on, in my opinion, right now. If we can find another way to do the boilers, uh, there's certain other things that we might be able to deal with in a different manner. Uh, I, you know, fire services needs our help. There is no doubt about it, and I'll be the first one to say that. Um, I kind of like to see the one mill go to fire services and try to take about eighty thousand dollars to repay the fire, to repay them for their capital expense of the matching grant for the breathing apparatus. Take that from the ARPA funds and have a one mill increase for their other needs. Uh, another question I had, um, like uh, the. Uh, Debt service fund. Uh, is it because the interest rates are going up? Is that the we're tied to or what's going on with that? No, we, we, we refinanced that loan back in 2017. It's a fixed rate in, uh, loan. It's because the, the, <clears throat> the schedule of payments, the way it was laid out and, uh, and approved at the time, was it increased and then it'll slowly over time start decreasing. So okay. there's a few years here where we have the, the most amount of payment that's due. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't want to take away from the fire services. I think uh, the savings, since we've moved all these fees into a different millage rate for the fire services, for emergency services, I'd feel better trying to find the savings in the general fund to cover that um, and not raise taxes if possible. What we're looking at you know, between three quarters of a million, almost a million dollars uh, of tax increase. And we have, uh, if we have a good chunk of left of ARP, I like to use as much of, we, of the ARP funds as we can to, uh, you know, backfill that where legally possible, uh, rather than raise taxes when we have all that cash from the federal government sitting there. Can I note that you cannot use ARPA money to pay to pay off debt? No, that's fine. I wasn't. I wasn't implying for I'm the just service. That service that fund. Clear. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I was thinking more of the other items in the general fund. Not the specific to the, the debt service fund. But you, you could make a contribution to a capital fund from from the ARPA. Yes, but you you still need to spend that money by twenty twenty six. Gotcha. Which? Oh, that's all right. Uh, it, well, it, what would, it, would it be possible for some of the items, like for example, the trucks we approved today, that were on the budget for this year? I mean. Could we use our funds for that kind of thing? Shuffle the numbers around so that we don't have to increase taxes. That's the kind of thing I'm looking, the ideas I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, I don't have the command of the budget that you may have had since. Theoretically, yes, that, you, you could make moves to make capital purchases and then take the money from American Rescue Plan money rather than the general fund. Yeah. I think I'd rather do something like that than, than raise taxes, in my opinion. And with with that train of thought, I mean there there are some adjustments that that maybe there maybe there's some savings in what we're projecting to spend on something in, in the ARPA fund list here. Is there? I mean, do we do we? I don't know if we know exactly what we're going to do on, on Sycamore Street. I, maybe we're maybe there is a full two hundred fifty thousand there. Okay, but there might be some adjustments we can make in those numbers. Uh, yes. Each one of those, these itemized expenditures under that fund will need to be approved by the board to make those purchases. So each one of these will be coming back, and hopefully the values that were identified previously are still valid. Right, that they haven't gone up. <laughs> they could go down. Right. However, you got that three hundred ninety thousand dollars in the general fund that you need to cover by taxes, and so if I'm saying you take that out, take that three hundred ninety thousand out of the general fund, you still have oh nearly a million dollars in ARPA left, and you can still we can still vote on these items, you know, as needed, plus the other things that were mentioned. 
to decide how to spend that other million dollars of ARPA funds. I'm sure we can, uh, you know, I'm not saying we shouldn't spend uh, $100,000 for finance code software, or we shouldn't spend 120000 for TV booth and AV equipment, and we shouldn't, you know, I'm not saying we shouldn't spend 170000 in road construction, but I'm saying let's take that out of the general fund as you put it in there, and let's talk about that when we talk about how to spend the $1 million that we already have la uh, languishing in the bank from ARPA. We don't need to have that $390,000 in the general fund for which it, the, those expenses have to be covered to a certain degree by an increase in taxes. What is the $390,000 that you're referring to? $100,000 for Ministry of Finance Code Software, $120,000 for TV. Okay, so that's all coming out of the American Rescue Fund. Yeah, but it's, you understand, it's in the general fund. You're putting that it's expense, not, you put that expense in the general fund in this budget. Oh, I see what you're saying. Trans, instead of, so pay for it out of general fund money rather than American Rescue Plan money? No. <laughs> that's, that's what I thought you were saying. No, I'm saying don't include that in your general fund expenditures, okay? It's not. No. It is. No, it's, in, it's under the American Rescue Fund. <laughs> I, I didn't see it that way. No, it's... Can it, you show me in the uh, budget where that is? I'm page sorry. Page 14. <sighs> okay, where are we here? Expenditures. Is 100. Yeah, 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 I know, but it doesn't say this is coming. All right. I still am objecting to making this decision as part of the budget process. So this is this is how the auditors want to see this stuff laid out. So whether these these stay here if the if the projects change, you can amend that by a resolution just as we had done in the past. So say you want to take the remainder of the American Rescue Fund money and pave a road with it. You do that by a, a budget resolution later on in the year. Okay, so you're saying uh, if we wanted to spend more than 120000 for AV upgrades, we can do that. Yes, still do that. and we would do a budget. And, but all this money comes from the American, the, the account. Does okay. It? Yes. So... Uh, I'm mistaken to believe it's causing it more of an increase in taxes. No, yes, there's no increase in taxes for this. Okay, thank for the you. American Rescue Fund money. I did. Mr. Uh, Davis, for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I, what I, what I'd like to see, and if anyone else agrees with me, I'm, I'm okay with raising taxes for the EMS. I'm sorry for the fire <laughs> ambulance service. Uh, due to the referendum that was on the ballot yesterday, I'm pretty sure that's pretty clearly been approved by the, our voters. Um, I'd like to see the rest of the tax increase taken care of with ARP funds if possible. Uh, and we get creative on what we can spend it on. Um, I think we could probably brought, bring it down to two mils to try to uh, not raise taxes this year, next year. So you're saying eliminate the two mils entirely? Yeah, I say uh, I'm I'm for the fire, <laughs> for the ambulance squad funds, that was approved yesterday. That tax increase I I can get behind. The rest of it I would like to eliminate with our funds if possible. So the only tax increase would be the zero point five mills. That right for for ambulance, correct? Okay. Well, I would be in favor of of that plus one mill for the uh, fire association, half of that one mil for retention uh, goes into the general fund and one mil, uh, one half a mil goes to um, capital fund. So half a mil for retention, half a mil for the uh, gen uh, capital fund. And totally would be 1.5 mil increase instead of 0.5. So what you're proposing is to put roughly the equivalent of half a mil into the um, 
the cap the fire association capital fund yeah and then the re it would be reduced the amount of money you would be giving the fire association would be reduced by about half yeah from, from they'd still be getting yes right so they would be getting about 150,000 instead of 300 and well, they would get half a mil. They would get one mil total, half a mil for the uh, capital fund. The, the capital funds maintained by the township. Isn't it, isn't don't you have one mil here for the capital fund? It's approximately equivalent. One mil transferred to the fire association capital fund, which right. is a township fund. It's not the fire association. It's not the fire association. No. It's one well, of those funds. Whatever. Uh, half a mil for the capital fund and half a mil to the fire association. Right? Okay. Uh, That's what I'm, I'm suggesting. I don't know. Yeah, I, let me clarify what I was suggesting. I, we moved the fire fund, the fire items to a separate fund. I'm not saying we cut those monies for the fire association. I'm suggesting we take the savings, we, t we look for a savings in the general fund to cover that difference, even though it's in the other fund. I mean, if we have to move it back, and I don't know, you know, accounting-wise, if that's something that had to be done, um, put it back in the general fund. But I'd like to see all the money for the fire association to stay, just that we find savings in the rest of the budget to cover it. That's what I was trying to say. If I'm not mistaken, one of those mills was for uh, the fire, uh, a potential uh, purchase of a fire truck that will be needed in three years when our fire, tr fire truck <clears throat> number 55 is then out of date, so to speak, right? That's correct. Doesn't, doesn't the Newtown Fire Association buy the equipment? They own all the equipment, don't they? They own the equipment. However, if we were to go move to a 24-hour coverage uh, scenario, the township would need to start purchasing th that type of equipment. Well, so... We are giving money to the Newtown Fire Association Capital Fund. No. All right. We're giving... They're buying the equipment from our fund. That's correct. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I would just like to see the increase in taxation to be around 1.5 mills instead of the 2.625 and the way that I'm suggesting it is, of course, we got the half a mil that the voters already voted on for the Newtown Ambulance Squad. And then we got half a mil that could go to retention and recruitment for Newtown Fire Association. And half a mil could go to the capital fund for pur purchasing a new truck, if that's possible. Feasible. The, the bottom line of that is that I could possibly be in agreement with, uh, but technically how it's done is the next question. May I say, uh, add sure. into this conversation yeah, yeah, yes, here? Yes, please. I, I'm just looking at the uh, future projections of, of maybe future budgets and as we get lean and mean, I guess our, one of our only ways to derive revenue is for taxation. Uh, nobody up here likes to tax anyone. But um, the other things I look at is that we always carry over a large fund balance from the previous year. It looks like we're going to carry over about close to $4 million. Um, now, I know that that's money that goes through the budget. But other things that I, I look at and to take into consideration is we've got two uh, development projects going on in this township of which homes are going to be valued at probably close to a million dollars. Uh, we've got one that's, uh, I believe, 60 units, the other 45 units, mm -hmm. so 105 units. Now, this is an instantaneous money, but looking that it's going to be projected to the future, um, we're going to get transfer tax on these. Now, also, to live in these houses, I'm, I'm assuming that the people that are going to buy these homes probably have good salaries, six figures or more. And uh, we're going to get the uh, resident EIT tax off of that. So a a as we, we're getting leaner, we have, to, we have to look to what's going to be projected into the future. And I think these are two things, transfer tax, which will eventually run out, 
but we'll get transfer tax on, on properties that are bought and sold uh, in the secondary market, so to speak, homes that are already built. Um, now, uh, I agree maybe there may be a way to reduce the millage. And, I mean, I have a, maybe a more simplistic way to have it done, but I'm looking at our net fund balance projected for 1.674 million. Is that is that correct, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lewis? Page 12. Okay, that's correct. And our uh, total budget to be 15 million 882 Now, my my suggestion would be, uh, and it would maybe fall in line with what Mr. Mack is saying to drop it down to. Not two mil, two point whatever mills, but the one point whatever mills. I would suggest taking three hundred and fifty thousand, which would be one mill, from that net fund balance, which would knock it to one million three hundred twenty four thousand eight hundred and six, which would give us a eight point three four percentage. Now I know everybody's all bent on the ten percent mark and so on, but looking that we end the year with almost four million dollars in bun fa uh, fund balance forward plus during the course of the year hopefully transfer tax increases i always look at it uh, i try to go conservative on transfer tax thinking that if we get more and, and i and i like that mr lewis budgeted seven hundred thousand of which it looks like we projected 850,000 is that that correct that's correct so that to me is a windfall uh, go low and hopefully comes in high I mean a budget is is just a um, a idea a plan of what's going to happen we can't predict anything we couldn't predict pandemics or um, sicknesses or anything like that but I, I think looking at this budget, if we wanted to knock down one mill and still be relatively solvent at over 8% in general fund, I, I would take that one mill from the 1.674 uh, in the general fund and knock down a, a mill off of the uh, tax base. Um, I mean, that's my, that's, my, uh, that's my suggestion, simple. I'm not trying to move money around from here to there to there to here. I'm just one simple deduction and calculation with the projection that we may get a windfall in uh, transfer tax, being that Mr. Lewis uh, kind of um, went conservative on that, that 700000 And, um, you know, hopefully as people move in to these new developments, uh, we're going to get people uh, with a high high tax base on their earned income tax. If we if we don't show that we're trying to derive revenue in some some manner, it's going to hurt us in a lot of other ways. Uh, right now, we borrow money to uh, do our road programs. Well, if our Moody Moody ratings go down, nobody's going to want to lend us money. Uh, you're talking about the auditors. The auditors are going to give us a bad rating because we haven't proven that we could derive any kind of income and what they're going to say well when was the last time you raised taxes now naturally okay we may have raised taxes last year but prior to that I don't think this township raised taxes in 20 years and we were doing good because our so-called where we live the biggest and the best or whatever they were all farmland at one time and we're all here because we live on farmland and the farmland was developed so when some farmland is suggested not to be developed, why are we here? So, I mean, we have to realize that futuristically we need to do something because if we want to hire more policemen, if we want to get more uh, firemen, if we want a 24-hour fire service, it's going to cost money. And unless there's some way we could derive income out there, if, if somebody's got a ma major plan, maybe we could sell off the, the west wing of this building or something like that, but that's only temporary money. So my suggestion is I, I think we do have to raise taxes somewhat, 
but maybe there's a way to take a, a lighter load off of that. And my suggestion was be to deduct it out of the general fund uh, because the general fund is our rainy day money. And if this isn't a rainy day time, I, I don't know what would be. That's it. That's, so, uh, uh, that's a pretty cut and dry, simple. I, I, I have no other... <laughs> I have no other bag of tricks that I could, uh, Mr. That I could Clapper, pull out. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so your suggestion would be the, the increase would be 1.625? Well, I don't know the point. You said take off one mil. Is that what you were suggesting? Well, yeah, because we would take one mil from the general fund. So, it'd be so whatever it would be, I, I yeah. don't have the point six, whatever You, you yeah. know that better than me. I don't no. Know. no, no, I'm just well, saying. 1.625. I'm, not, six, two, five. I'm yeah. not being okay. funny. I'm just saying. I'm, I just want to understand. Just thinking that that'll cut one mil, whatever the deduction or calculation comes out to be. Uh, I just have a point of clarification, not a big deal. We we did raise taxes more than 20 years ago, according to what I looked up. Uh, this board first raised them in 2017, then 2018, and then 2021. Because we from 2.5 mils to currently 8.49. We started the. Um Fire tax. For the fire hydrants, yeah. yes. You move something else out of the general fund yeah. and raise taxes then, yes. Well, it sounds like we have a little bit of consensus, a little bit of consensus, uh, that's the way it sounds to me, uh, for 1.5 or 1.65. 625. 625, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, is there is there a, a benefit for keeping that? 1.25 or that 0.125 for the debt service, keeping that in debt service. That the benefit is there a benefit? I, I, I believe, Mr. Sander, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. I think you have to cover your debt with tax revenue. Yeah, that, that's required by the terms okay. of the debt, yes. So that's why I would keep the 0.125 in there and make it 1.625. The an eighth of a mil is what? Two dollars a month, I think. Something like that, minimal. Um, might be might be pennies, actually. But less might be less than a dollar. I have to do the numbers. Um, and what Mr. Clabber was suggesting was was certainly. Something that I gave thought to of reducing the the percentage, uh, the fund balance percentage. Um, I had done it with a, a low. I had done it with a little bit lower number, but uh, uh, you know, certainly we could. If, I mean, I trust your math that it was eight point four something for a, for a whole mill. 8.34%. Yeah, 8.34%. So that's deducting $350,000, approximately one mil off right. of the uh, net fund balance. Yep. I don't know how other people would feel about that. I, I would just note that... Uh, <laughs> If, uh, never mind. Okay. And then my other, my only other question is if all those, if the changes that we're making affect anything, that we don't have to repost the budget. No, you're not increasing. Not increasing any. Right, you're not increasing, you're decreasing, actually it's decreasing. So. Yes. Okay. Um, is, is there any action that we want to take this evening, or do we want to hold it off to a future meeting? Well, I, I think we last time we had the manager come back based upon our conversation with some kind of revision that then we could vote on, correct? So, I, yes, I would request a consensus of what those revisions would be. Are we looking to transfer $350,000 more out of the general fund towards the fire fire fund to then be transferred as, as it's written um, 
and reducing the total millage by one by one mill. Well, I think the consensus is I don't understand how to move all the numbers around, but if it's 1.625 tax increase, I think we have a consensus or could get a consensus on that number. That, that's the direct direction I'm looking for. And then you right. move things around as you see fit. Right. So, you, so what you will see is an additional transfer to the fire, fire uh, fund in the future mm -hmm. when I get this worked out. Okay. Sounds, sounds good to me. Kyle, is that, that's what you were getting at, right? I like my idea better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it does seem like we have some consensus. All right. Um, well, it, uh, I mean, if there is some public comment, Frank McCarran, Delancey yes. Court. Um, just before I read these, I, I I'm a little confused about the fire payments. Um, my understanding is historically we gave them 175,000 to assist with their operations. And then we added $100,000 for incentives for people from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. to to cover, to, to show up. And that we added $50,000 for two people to be there at the firehouse sitting on weekends because no one was showing up on weekends and then the fire chief would just be the, the third wheel on that. Um, I think that's what I understood it to be, but I could be wrong. That's what, 175 historically, and it's just their, their operations. And then the others, stipends for overnight and then two per diem guys on weekends. That's what I thought. Um, and I, I know that in the past, when it comes to buying fire trucks, the NFA has funded that themselves. The, in the last truck, right, it was 797000 and they funded it 100% themselves. So I don't know, maybe their financial situation has changed, but I, I think since you're contributing money to them, you should definitely be getting some sort of financial statements and financial reports and mm -hmm. figure out for yourselves where all the money is going um, because it's your money you're giving. So anyway. Um, so last year, I, I said to you that I was concerned whether the level of spending in the tw 2022 budget was sustainable in 2023 and beyond. Um, in 2022, the township budgeted to spend $1 million more than e-consult shown in their five-year forecast. In 2023, the township plans to spend $1.5 million more than e-consult had forecasted. Last year, I said that I had projected forward the 2022 budget to 2023, and I thought the budget at shortfall in 2023 would be north of $2 million. And the 2023 preliminary budget actually shows a shortfall of $2.3 million. At this spending trajectory, I would be surprised if the tax increase in 2024 is less than five mils, and I would not be surprised if the tax increase in 2024 was 10 mils. I understand that a total general fund millage above 14 mils would require court approval and that the maximum millage allowed is 19 mils. So this is a situation that you must avoid. To put 2023 into perspective, the 2.3 million budget shortfall in 2023 is actually worse than what eConsult said would have happened if the township had not implemented any recommendation and just stayed on its then present path with the take call the baseline forecast. While revenues in 2023 are 1.4 million higher due to the 3.99 mil tax increase in 2021, that has been more than offset by expenditures in 2023 that are 2.1 million higher than e consulted said would happen if the township had kept to its baseline forecast. Historically, the budget has been conservative, understating the year-end fund balance. 
that's happening in 2022, which is why you don't have a tax increase in 2023. 2022 actual results are projected to be $950,000 better than budget. But I said last year that given the size of the deficits, it's hard to make a case that a better than expected fund balance at the end of 2023 would be high enough to avoid a tax increase in 2024. I said last year, and I will say again, that you need a five-year rolling forecast so you can understand the effects of this level of spending going forward. And even if your spending growth in 2024 is much more limited, you may still need to raise taxes in 2024 to build a cushion for the following years. You don't want to find yourself maxed out on millage rates in later years. Last year, I had recommended that you get the following updated information over the summer, and I would recommend you do that this year as well. First, a mid-year updated 2023 budget so you can get a better idea where the pending fund balance will actually finish for the year. Second, a list of big budget items for 2024 so you can prioritize spending. And third, a status update on all the recommendations in the eConsult report. Regarding the last item, eConsult recommended that in 2023, you renegotiate what they described as unfavorable provisions in the police contract pertaining to staffing, overtime, and compensatory time. And that's on page 65 of their report. To illustrate, eConsult said that the police contract allows for 240 hours of compensatory time per year, while typical is 80 hours. The annual budget for compensatory time has routinely been exceeded, but it's starting in 2021, the numbers have jumped dramatically. In 2021, the budget amount was $70,000, but the actual amount was 156,510. In 2022, the budget amount again was 70,000, but, but the projected actual amount is 150,000. In 2023, the budget is being increased from 70,000 to 125,000. Econsult also recommended that the township participate in a study to regionalize the police force with the municipalities and the Council Rock School District to be completed by the fourth quarter of 2023. Econsult said on page 64 of their report that if this recommendation is seriously considered, the township can expect significant savings. As for, I want to talk about emergency services. Um, I personally believe it is time to hire weekend firefighters, even if that means raising taxes. Last year, you put a temporary Band-Aid on the coverage problem by what, what I understood was an allocating $50,000 to pay for two volunteers to stay at the station on weekends. But it's every response needs at least three firefighters, from what I understand, that pretty much meant that the, either the fire chief or assistant fire chief had to be on standby for all calls. I said last year that I thought the ARPA funds gave you some choices other than taxes. I suggested that you set aside 1.8 million of the 2 million ARPA funds and earmark those funds to be used to hire firefighters in case you did not receive a safer grant, thereby paying for weekend firefighters for three years. You chose not to do that and spent half the ARPA funds. You could still use 600,000 of the ARPA funds to pay for weekend firefighters in 2023 and raise taxes in 2024, which would put you in the same place as if you had received a safer grant back in 2020 for three years. You have, um, but as of right now, that's not what the plan is in the budget. Now, I'll note that you have already exceeded eConsult's recommended police budget by an amount that exceeds the cost of weekend firefighters. And so as you have already invested in additional police, you could pause on additional police hiring and hire firefighters instead. So instead of treating the lieutenant as a new hire at a salary of 125,000, you could promote a sergeant of a cost of less than 15,000, thus freeing up $110,000 towards firefighter salaries. Instead of hiring a patrol officer at 70,000, you could hire a firefighter. I would, I would ask that you find out what the fire chief needs, uh, particularly for weekends, and prioritize that spending in 2023. Now, Mr. Clob was right. I mean, you could do much better next year than what these numbers would indicate. And I'll give you my notes and I'll give you a, a schedule with some calculations. Um, but if you don't, the numbers are just getting so big that without a five-year plan, I, I just don't know where it's going. 
Um, and, you know, honestly, if the five-year plan showed dramatic increases, I would say you're in a position this year to prophylactically raise taxes and build a cushion. That was eConsult's plan. They had to tax everything up front, and they build a cushion in for future years of monies they wouldn't be spending so that you weren't going near that 14 mils. Um, so, look, I hope I'm wrong, um, but I'll hand this to you. And, uh, you know, and I'm not telling you to cut anything. Um, if anything, I, I want you to invest in firefighters. So, um, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do you have any, any new business this evening? Seeing none, uh, we already mentioned our executive session. And without objection, I will find us adjourned for the evening. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>